Welcome back to Movie Recapped. Today I will show you a sci-fi horror film from 1995 titled Species. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. For the past 30 years, the world's most powerful radio telescopes have been scanning the heavens searching for signals from alien civilizations. The project is called SETI, which stands for Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. One night, in their lab in Utah, young girl Syl is put in a chamber to be killed with cyanide gas, while the head of the project, Xavier, watches with tears in his eyes and whispered an apology. However, Syl won't stand for this and she breaks the glass to escape. She's so fast the guards can't catch her and she manages to jump into a train while it's still moving. There, she has visions of a weird monster, and when a hobo tries to come closer to her, she pushes him with such strength that she kills the man. Syl doesn't let this bother her though, in fact, she steals the man's clothes to cover up that lab gown. When the train stops at the station, Syl gets off and wanders around the station's shop to learn how capitalism works. Then, she steals a bag from a man's pile of luggage and gets back on a different train, this time taking a passenger's car. She goes to the dining area to steal money, and in the kitchen, she steals as much food and random objects as she can fit in the bag, hiding whenever she hears someone come by. Now that she has supplies, she takes a seat at a cabin, where she eats and watches the small TV she found in the bag as if she had never done any of these things before. When a conductor shows up to ask for a ticket, the woman doesn't mind selling her one, and Syl just nods along with all her questions to play along. Syl spends her entire trip eating as much as possible, but sleeping is hard because of the nightmares. She also is starting to notice weird pulsing bumps under her skin when suddenly a bunch of tentacles sprout out of her body. When the conductor comes to check on her again, she finds a nasty cocoon on the ceiling and immediately gets killed. Meanwhile, Xavier and his guards find the murdered hobo and realize Syl could be anywhere now. They can't ask the police for help without having to answer weird questions, so they decide to put together a special team. There's Dan, who is an empath that can sense presences and emotions. Stefan, a doctor from Harvard's anthropology department expert at cross-cultural behavior. Laura, a molecular biologist. And Preston, a freelancer that takes care of government's problems by hunting down any loose ends. Xavier gathers the team in his office to give him the full story of what happened. After 30 years of sending messages to outer space, the SETI project finally got an answer back from an alien. This message turned out to be a new sequence of DNA with friendly instructions on how to combine it with ours. They injected this sequence into one human ova, and the only one that survived was codenamed Syl, who grew into a young girl in just one month. They kept her caged and isolated for safety's sake, but after three months, she started to have nightmares and some mysterious bumps would appear under her skin. That was when the project was cancelled and the decision to kill Syl was taken, but she escaped and now the team's mission is to find and kill her. Back to the train, after killing the conductor, Syl comes out of the cocoon as a grown woman. Wearing the conductor's clothes and fanny pack, she gets off in Los Angeles, where she can't stop staring at the children in the streets. After doing some shopping that includes a fancy dress, Syl checks in at a motel, where she watches more TV and learns about things like hair dye, adult movies, and a recent earthquake in the area. In the meantime, the team is called to look at the conductor's body, and Dan can sense Syl was frightened, but she had no remorse. Laura points out all her eating must be to store calories for something, and Stefan recognizes the nasty substances on the ceiling as a cocoon, which informs them of Syl's body change. Preston also asks the guards to keep an eye for anyone using the conductor's credit card, since it seems Syl took her belongings. The team immediately moves to Los Angeles since that was the train's last stop, and checks in at a hotel while Xavier orders his researchers to bring the lab over as well because Laura has an idea. She wants to grow another alien, this time without combining it with human DNA so they can study the creature's vulnerabilities. Once the lab is set up, Laura begins working with the alien DNA, but the camera goes down in the middle of the experiment. She decides to change the camera herself with the help of Preston, but while they're in the middle of it, the alien DNA activates and begins growing quickly. They need to close the box before it escapes, but in their hurry, they lose a bolt and the creature is starting to get out. Xavier refuses to open the door because of possible contamination, and Protocol says he must burn the room and everything in it. While Laura and Preston attack the creature to keep it back, the rest of the team pushes Xavier away and opens the door so their friends can come out before the room is burned to ashes. In the evening, Syl changes into more casual clothes and asks the motel receptionist to tell her where to find a good man. The guy tells her about the nearby club and asks for her credit card for room incidentals. And since it's the conductor's card, the team is informed of her location. At the club, Syl tries to approach a man, but she's beaten by another woman. Considering her competition, Syl follows this woman to the bathroom and kills her in the stall. Then she searches for another man and finds Robbie, who gladly takes her back to his place. When Robbie tries to get busy with her, Syl changes her mind because she detects something in the man's body. But since Robbie doesn't want to let her go, Syl kills him for trying to force her. The team arrives at the motel and gets the security tapes sent to the lab, and the receptionist tells them about the club. When they get there, they find the body in the bathroom and they're about to remember Syl leaving with one of the club's regulars, so the team gets to search for Robbie. Unfortunately, by the time they get to Robbie's house, they only find his body. 
Laura can see Silas trying to mate, but if she changed her mind, it's because she realized Robbie wasn't adequate. Finding some medicine in the bathroom shows them Robbie was diabetic, which means Sil can detect genetic damage in potential mates. Speaking of Sil, she has stolen Robbie's car, but the team and the police are all over the motel and the club so she drives away. She spends the night sleeping in the car and having more nightmares, and in the morning, she drives off until the car runs out of gas in Santa Monica. When she tries to cross the street, another driver doesn't see her and accidentally hits her before driving away. But witness called John immediately takes her to the hospital. While John checks her in and pays for the expenses with his card because he likes to help, the doctor checks on Syl and is impressed by how quickly she's healed. He also notices the pulsing bumps on her back, so Syl decides to leave before her secret is revealed. On her way out, she bumps into John, who has been worried and stayed in the hospital to know if she survived the crash. Syl can see he's a good, healthy man and asks him to take her home with him. At his house, John makes them dinner and takes a selfie with Syl, but she's too impatient and quickly drags him into the jacuzzi. Back to the team, they manage to enhance a security tape. Syl's face is still not clear enough, but they can tell she's in her prime, which means she could have a bunch of boys that could impregnate dozens of women at the same time. Clearly, they're dealing with a predatory species here, and that could mean the extinction of the human race. The police eventually find Robbie's car and the team travels to Santa Monica, where they also get a call from the doctor who has found freaky stuff in Syl's blood sample. At the hospital, they find John's card information and rush to his home. Syl can hear them enter the house and decides to push John underwater to kill him. Then she hides among the bushes, thus by the time the team makes it outside, it's too late. The selfie John took is useless because Syl moved so they still don't have her face to search for her. Seeing as they can't do anything else tonight, the team decides to go back to the hotel and rest, deciding they can stake out the club the next day. Meanwhile, Syl has run out of the house and stolen a car from a random woman, which she uses to drive back to John's house just in time to see the team leave. Reading Xavier's lips, she can tell they'll be at the club. Once she's learned their location, Syl goes away the night at the house belonging to the woman she stole the car from, who is now tied to the bed. Another nightmare gets Syl while she sleeps, this time she sees herself getting busy with Preston. In the morning, she decides on a plan to get the team off her back. First, she gets her own finger because she can regrow another. Then she takes one from the woman's hand as well, which she throws in the trash. Afterwards, she goes to the gas station and fills a bunch of containers with gasoline before studying the area to find a building with a high voltage transformer. In the evening, the team guards the club, but nothing happens until Dan goes outside to catch some air. Syl appears in front of her for just a few seconds before running away and getting inside a car where she's keeping the kidnapped woman and the gasoline containers. The team chases her out of town, but this is all a part of Syl's plan. She drives the car towards the building with the transformer, jumping right before it crashes. A big explosion burns the entire vehicle while Syl escapes in another car she left nearby earlier. The body of the kidnapped woman is badly burned, but the team assumes it's Syl because of the thumb they find stuck in the door. While Syl returns to the woman's house to dye and cut her hair, the team goes out to have a few drinks to celebrate. Syl arrives at the hotel bar as well, and in the bathroom, she bumps into Laura, so she takes the chance to borrow her perfume. Then Laura tells the guy she'll be going back to her room because she's tired, and Preston goes after her when Dan and Stefan encourage him, saying Laura clearly wants him. In the elevator, Preston finds Syl and comments on her perfume, and Syl gets out on the same floor as him with clear intention of using him as her next baby daddy. However, when she approaches the room, she hears Preston getting busy with Laura. After stealing the maid's keys, Syl decides to enter the room next to the happy couples, where she listens to their business through the wall while having more visions. Back in the bar, Stefan tries to flirt with some girls and is turned down, so he decides to retire for the night. When he enters his room, he finds Syl there, and he doesn't question it when she drags him to bed because he's always been a loser nerd that never got lucky, and this is finally his chance. As Syl gets Stefan's seed, she keeps having her weird visions, making Dan have them as well and detect that she's in the building. Dan approaches Stefan's room and senses Syl's evil presence, causing him to go recruit Laura and Preston for help. Meanwhile, Syl's done with Stefan and can already feel life growing in her stomach. When Stefan realizes this as well, he freaks out, but Syl kills him before he can scream. At that moment, the team makes it to the room, so Syl morphs into her full alien form and escapes by running through the wall. They follow her downstairs to the parking lot where they discover she's even been able to get through a steel door. After grabbing some weapons from Preston's car, including flamethrowers, they enter the tunnel Syl took, where they find the maintenance guy dead. They also find the hotel's manhole open, which means Syl has escaped through the sewers. The team enters the sewers with Preston at the front, always activating the flamethrower before turning any corner just in case. Dan is feeling confused because he can't sense which way Syl has gone and the team splits, which proves to be a bad idea. It turns out Syl is hiding underwater, so when Xavier is left alone, she jumps on him to kill him before escaping through a crack in the wall made by the recent earthquake. Now Syl's out of the water, Dan can sense her presence, and the remaining trio goes through the crack as well to reach a cavern where, unknown to them, Syl is giving birth to a boy 
who is feeding on rats. The bottom of the cavern is full of oil and once again the team splits to cover more ground. By climbing some rocks, Dan finds the boy and tries to be gentle, but the boy attacks him, making him fall. Laura tries to help Dan but ends up slipping and falling into the oil as well. The boy finishes morphing into his alien form and tries to attack Dan again, but Dan lights him on fire with the flamethrower as he slips too and is left hanging on the edge of the rocks. The boy also falls into the oil well, which starts a huge fire near Laura. Fear gives her the strength she needs to climb out of the well and go to Dan while Preston fights Syl, who has come out after hearing her son's dying cries. One of Syl's tentacles catches Preston and tries to choke him, but he uses a knife to cut the tentacle off and free himself. Then Preston takes out his gun and shoots Syl until she falls off the edge into the oil fire. Afterward, Preston and Laura run to Dan to help, but Syl is grabbing his legs and pulling him down, so Preston hurries to unload his shotgun and blow Syl's head up. After getting Dan back up, the trio leaves the sewers, glad to see this is finally over. Unknown to them, one of the cave rats is eating the tentacle Preston cut off and begins morphing until it grows its own tentacle that allows it to kill other rats. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.